right. I'll uh, greet them first, though. Okay. Howdy, guys. Um, so, last module, you heard from a friend of mine, John Bedore. Uh, yeah, we had John Bedore. I love John Bedore. <laughs> and uh, he was sharing with you what it means to take care of yourself and your soul and your spirit uh, so that you can be ready to lead. Um, in this module, I want to uh, investigate a little bit more, like, what does it look like to lead worship? Um, like, specifically the music, and what is the planning that goes into it? So I brought in somebody that you guys know and love, Hope Brown! Woohoo! Um, that's when there should be, like, applause or something, and there is not, because it's the video. Um, okay. Awkward. Okay, without applause. <laughs> um, so, uh, Hope, um, tell me a little bit about you are given like a a sermon that uh, Pastor Dan, the pastor that you work mm -hmm. with here, uh, is planning to preach. How do you take the bare bones that he's given you, and like, what is the first thing you think of, or are working through when you're trying to create a worship service from that? That's a good question. Like, take us through all the steps, whatever goes through <laughs> your brain. <laughs> well. Um, I really like that we do sermon series here okay. because that's super helpful to me because there's themes, right? And so yep. sometimes when I look at the themes for a few months, um, I can kind of start to pick songs because I'm always trying to introduce some new songs while singing the songs we already know. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always looking at the songs that I'm thinking about singing and praying about singing. It's usually songs that I hear on the radio or on Spotify or whatever, or I hear like bands that I really love, like Hillsong comes out yeah. with a new album and I'm able to say like, that is a song that our church I think would really resonate with. And you know, it is really the Holy Spirit. I feel like it gives you a sense, but also sometimes, I mean, this is a tangent, but you try a song and it <laughs> doesn't work or does work. But anyways, I mean, I'm looking ahead at that and how our sermon series will relate to those songs. Um, and then I'm also just thinking about, okay, so this particular sermon is about Jesus's love or about, um, last week, actually someone talked to me today, Sunday, today, um, that last week we had saying I surrender all and that mm. seemed like it really made sense of the sermon, but also they carried that with them for the week of that's really the message that yeah. we all need to be singing and praying all the time. Yeah. So every week it's looking at what are the themes we're trying to address because uh, Martin Luther says this, and I am totally going to botch up the quote, but it's, <laughs> it's this thought of the things we sing, the truths we sing are actually teaching us as much, if not more, than the message. And so I'm always thinking about what truths can we sing as a foundation hmm. that really back up what Pastor Dan is trying to preach. Um, yeah. So you were talking about, uh, like, you... You usually get the whole sermon series, and there are themes within it. Yes. Uh, but you were talking about um, there's there's songs that you try to rope in that they know, and mm -hmm. uh, songs that you're trying to to teach them explore yep. that idea more. Yeah. Well, obviously, I've all been. I'm sure all of us have been to a place where you hear all the songs, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I know all these songs. How yeah. fun!" And I've been to places where. And I think that I know a lot of worship songs, probably comparatively to most people. And I've been to worship services where I don't know <laughs> a single song. And it makes me uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Because even though I love worship music and it, it's not the newness, I mean, it's just more like, well, I'll stand here for four songs and try my best to learn them. And so I'm really always juggling. You want people to feel comfortable. You want them to know things. And obviously, we, we're not everyone's cup of tea. Not every song is going to be every person's favorite, and I get that. But, you know, songs that they probably know, and, and then there's songs that they might be learning or that we might be learning as a congregation. And so if I'm going to do a new song, I will do one new song in a month. So, so up to 12 new songs a year, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and not every month do I pick a new song, especially... Um, like in June, I'm also the youth director here, and so I was gone for three weeks. So that would be a yeah. bad <laughs> month to do a new song. Because for sure. We wouldn't want to add. Can't introduce it. Yes. So, but you think about like 10 to 12 new songs every single um, week or every single month, year, year. 12 songs. <laughs> That's it. So, for I think of it then one new song for okay. a month. And so, something that actually a youth director or a worship director that I worked with um, taught me is that you 
introduce it for two weeks and then you take a week off and then you sing it again. Mm -hmm. And I really think that actually works really well. Um, and so oftentimes if I'm wanting to do a new song, first of all, I'm, look, I'm always listening to stuff and I always have some kind of Spotify playlist that I'm adding stuff to and then I'm yeah. sorting through it and looking for, okay, this month we are, well, was over the summer we talked a lot about the attributes of God and Jesus and so I was looking at like, this song really encompasses that. And so I pick it out um, and I start really focusing on it and send it to the band and get it all ready for them mm -hmm. to, so they have a couple of weeks and I put it in our pre-service playlist so people can start hearing it, that they, it's, so the first time we sing it, it's not the first time they've ever heard it for most of right. them. I'll yeah. even sometimes post it online on our website or on our Facebook page or on my Facebook page. And I'll send it to our whole worship team and all the vocalists now yeah. to really learn it. So because they're worship leading, even if they're not in front in the oh, pews yeah. with yep. the people. And so I do all of that beforehand so that when we get to the first week of singing it, mm -hmm. most people kind of have experienced it. So then we sing it two times, um, two Sundays in a row or two Wednesdays in a row. And then we usually take a week off and then we do it again. And it's amazing to me that like fourth week in the cycle, um, even if we did it like right off at the top of worship, because usually I try and try not to. Sometimes there's a song you have to do at the yeah. beginning, but most of the time I try to do it once people have kind of heard some other songs and I've sang yeah. along. But yeah, like this week we did "Fill This Place." It's by uh, Red River or Red Rocks. Red Rocks in worship. Colorado. Yeah, Red yeah. Rocks worship. Um, and the people have really come around it. It's just basically talking about the Holy Spirit filling this place and about our worship. And so I thought, you know, really that's. The cry from the start of worship mm -hmm. like we are worshiping god fill this place holy spirit and we sing it right away and it was fun to see so many people singing along so that's kind of yeah. my process um yeah so explore that thought a little bit more about um like that song for you it fits at the start of worship uh what is why what would be wrong with putting that song I don't know, right after communion. Like, well, <laughs> like what, how do you decide where a song fits yeah. in worship? It depends. I mean, and it depends on the context too. You know, um, at different worship settings or services, you're going to want a different feel. Um, but like usually where I would introduce a song would be actually during communion because people are doing other things so mm -hmm. they can kind of listen and they don't feel like, oh my gosh, I have to know all the words yeah. to the song. Um, but Fill This Place, for example, I just really felt like it has, you know, it's, it brings the energy that I think a lot of times worship services at the top, we want to energize people, we want to bring them in. Um, now, it's not always the case with anything, there's a lot of gray area there, <laughs> right. um, you know, and especially like, for example, a Lenten service here, um, where we're trying to really bring the mood into an introspective place, um, mm -hmm. into really reflection, I would not start a service with something really peppy or really <laughs> exciting because that's not what right. we're trying to go for right. um you know i don't think some people would say there's kind of a formula of like we do two fast songs and then we do a medium song and we do a slow song and i think mm -hmm. i've really stepped away from the formula because i think sometimes that really does put us in a box yeah and it's just like we just what is god saying or what is the holy spirit telling you to yep. you know and always being listening and being aware but generally i try to not have something super slow or like emotional right at the beginning because i think right. people are honestly if i think of what i would be like at the beginning of going to church <laughs> probably just trying to get my mindset wrapped around right. we exactly. made it yep. and these people that have children they got them all dressed and they they probably had to deal with some kind of <laughs> argument or meltdown or i don't know so you know by the time right. they get in yep. the door like you just need to kind of engage them to kind mm -hmm. of get into that space. And so I really, that's why I like to fill the space because really we're coming out to the words, it's Father, we're on our knees um, with every heartbeat. We mm -hmm. bring you this offering, Lord, come and fill this place. And by the bridge you're singing, and I will worship you, and I will worship you, and I will yeah. worship you. And it's it's really just like, yeah, okay. By like two minutes through the song, like I will worship you. That is why I'm here. Okay, my yeah. heart is starting yeah. to get in that right place. My mind is starting to get in that right place. Um, and then really here at Living Waters, which is different than like Oak Grove, we do like a song is kind of in a big yeah. chunk. But yeah. at church, I mean, oftentimes in most Lutheran churches, especially, I know you 
do songs throughout the service. Right. So for us, we do two songs right off the top. And so honestly, part of it is just finding two songs that actually work well together. Meaning what? Um, <laughs> key is important. So Meaning like the key songs. that the song is, you're going to sing yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So we don't want, like, some songs we can move the key around. It really depends on who's leading, you know, what is their range. Mm -hmm. um, and then not wanting to do, I know this is not everyone knows music, but I think you can understand you don't want to do a song that's like in A and then do a song in A sharp or something weird, like some weird key change between mm -hmm. the two songs where it would be really right. awkward to yeah. listen to. Um, but also like message. Sometimes I just look at it and I'm like, well, like this is Amazing Grace and Scandal of Grace or, you know, all these songs mm -hmm. that have to do with grace. Like that might be a good two song set right just like look at the themes together and what goes together and what even like what for me sometimes all of a sudden i'll be singing a song because really in worship leadership i think a big thing for all of us is we need to be worshiping by ourselves because mm -hmm. if we're not worshiping by ourselves we're, we like my job when i'm up in front of people is to worship god but like that mm -hmm. can't be my only moment of connection with god and so part of my worship during the week is planning for worship and so when I'm seeing a song or when I'm playing it and I'm like, okay, I know we want to do mm -hmm. this amazing grace right off the front. So at the end of that song, I just kind of play around on the piano for a little bit and just like kind of wait on the Lord and wait for him to speak or wait for a song to kind of come. Like, mm -hmm. I believe that's Holy Spirit inspiration. Sometimes it's like, man, like the middle, like one time we did Who You Say I Am. So I'm a child of God, yes, I am. And all of a sudden, I just started singing No Longer Slaves afterwards. Hmm. And I was like, okay, like those are the two <laughs> songs that go together. So I think it's yeah. it's a mix of a couple different elements and who's on the team that week. Mm -hmm. Because some song, you really need a drummer or you mm -hmm. really need someone who can sing that yeah. lead part or whatever. So there's a lot that goes into it. But I think we do two songs right off the top. We're trying. I'm trying most of the time to engage people, to remind them why we're there, mm -hmm. to bring everyone together songs they know yeah so nobody yep. everyone feels very confident coming into worship then after the message we're really that's usually the song i'm really trying to make sure we're right with the theme okay. because you're singing what you've just heard and so you're declaring mm -hmm. in belief what you've just kind of been taught about um like i said last week we talked about kind of letting go and surrendering to god and then we sing i surrender all yeah and then we do we do communion here every single week so then the communion song like i said sometimes i put a new song in there so that's a good time for people to yeah. listen and kind of be able to sing along but not feel so right. like pressure. Right. Um, like this week we sang We'll Come to the Altar, which I think is just made to be a communion song because mm. literally we're coming to the altar right. as we're singing that song and talking about God's salvation yeah. and grace. So yeah. that's a long answer. That's okay. There's lots of <laughs> I asked answers. a big question. <laughs> so those are some of the things I think I think about. One of the things you were talking about, um, like this week, you introduced a new song for Red Rocks. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of worship songs out there. How do you weed through uh, all of the things that you hear on Spotify or YouTube or whatever There's when somebody's just sending you a random text yes. with, please play this one? Mm -hmm. How do you weigh through what songs you want to use in worship and how do you decide if something maybe isn't right for worship? Well, there's a lot of good worship music out there. And sometimes I wish we could just do five new songs every week because there's so many good ones and so many new ones that are good. And honestly, sometimes I even like, I'm listening to Spotify and I'm like, oh yeah, we have not even done this one at church yet, even though so many people love it. So really, A, like I said, we get 12 chances a year. And so mm -hmm. we got to be real choice, like particular about those choices um, and make sure it's songs that for starters, I think I feel God and the Holy Spirit leading me towards um as the worship director and that means the other people in the church right leading them yeah. towards that too so yeah. i totally i love when people tell me songs that they're loving mm -hmm. um because that even just gives me an idea of where people are at and what yeah. people are listening to yeah. and what people are loving um about those themes that i think we really need to sing about and sometimes it's like i wish i will think or pray like god i wish there was a song that spoke this mm -hmm. you know and then Lo and behold, one comes into my, you know, awareness that I'm like, yeah, like that's really what I believe we need to be singing. But there's also, um, I think, so there is more songs than we could ever introduce yeah. in a year. Oh, yeah. Um, so there's a lot of good ones. Um, so it's partly theme, like I said, trying to figure out what we need to be singing about. Right. I think it's partly 
um, what our band can do that's real because um, there's some songs that I think literally like you've probably seen on worship YouTube or whatever like they have seven yeah. electric guitar players playing seven <laughs> arts and um, we're never going to have seven electric guitar players playing seven our, our right. church like building is not big enough for right. that or four keyboard players or right. you know whatever it is or like the vocal ranges for someone who's not me or not <laughs> one of our worship singers you know it's just you're for, you're looking at and sometimes like actually do you know the song tremble by mosaic yeah i've heard it but i couldn't okay. was, i don't remember well, it's very electronic when you first heard it and i was like i love this song but we could never yeah make that happen like I, we're not an electronic yeah we don't have, like, all the electronic stuff but i actually heard an acoustic version a couple months ago and i was like oh yeah if we did it like this because i think too then that gives me an ability to tell the band and go back to oh the yeah band yep. so sometimes yep. i'm surprised by it what we actually could do yeah. once I hear it in a different way. So yep. that's big. Um, there's other songs, I think, especially if we listen to Caleb or Spotify, I mean, his, all of the songs mm -hmm. ever. Um, and there are more songs that I think are personal worship than corporate worship. And when I say corporate worship, I mean, we can sing it together as a community. Like we can sing bless the Lord as a community. Oh yeah, we can 100%. Sing, even though we're singing like, or Lord, I need you. Um, that applies to all of us. Like yeah. everything about that message yeah. um, applies to every one of us. However, there are songs that are more, I think, for someone's specific season or moment, and they're beautiful, and the message is so real, and I sing those, but yeah. I think those are songs we sing. Like I sing to God in my personal worship. Um, I love praising the Lord in my car. That's a yeah. good time to sing to God yeah. um, in the shower, you know, wherever you are. But there are songs that are really just about me. Um, and especially if it's telling a story like I... I'm sitting alone and I'm crying and it's like, are we really all sitting alone and crying right now in community church? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, I kind of hope right. we're not sitting alone and crying in church altogether. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's just finding the messages that really resonate with everyone. Yeah. Um, so I think those are things that are really important to me. Um, and it's getting, it's the filter kind of has to be real small which is a bummer because there's a lot of songs even that i really love mm -hmm. that i wish we could do um and those songs too like we use a pre-service and post-service kind of spotify playlist to, mm -hmm. and i always add them to that yeah because even if i'm not ready or i don't think we have time for that right now we can always sing them oh yeah the church oh yeah so and you see people singing along which is really <laughs> so i think it really is it's a mixture of things and it's just the right song at the right time too some songs mm -hmm. Like, I think we'll do that tremble song at some point now, but yeah. I don't know when that is yet because yeah. I gotta find the space for it. <laughs> it's one of the 12. <laughs> yeah, one of the 12. So, we'll see. Um, when you are, if you're given a, a blank canvas for a space and you're asked to create worship, um, how do you, I mean, like, as a worship leader, you you do a lot musically, but um, you're also the person that's like assessing how the space feels for worship too. How do you make um, your average space feel intimate or ready for worship? Mm -hmm. Or what are the things that are important to you as you're trying to prepare a space for worship? Yeah, well again, I really learned about this in my context because I came from leading worship in college. Um, and then before that, I actually led worship at my home church, which is a big church with the lights and the sound and mm -hmm. like the 17 directors of things. And mm -hmm. so they really like the lighting person, they manage the lights, the sound person managed the sound, you know, like there's a whole hospitality and aesthetics com committee and stuff. And so coming to college and leading worship in college, it was really about giving people a place to connect with God in the midst of a place where they were really connecting with themselves and their education. Um, and that meant for me in terms of aesthetics, like we met in some places, um, like in college, it was just like, this is the room that's available for you. So that means a lot of things, right? Like anywhere could be a place where you can worship God. And honestly, I mean, that's true, right? Like any place is a place to worship yep. God. So you, yep. so aesthetics is nice, um, not, not required mm -hmm. in order to connect with God. However, it is, it's, it's, it just only adds to like, we care about yeah. wanting people to connect to God. So what can we do to allow them to do that? And so in college, we were really big into um, making it dark because we mm. felt like people were, and that's, I still believe that, but I think when, when it's not, the lights aren't up, 
we don't feel like everyone can look at us. We are much more willing to connect with God hmm. in whatever way feels most comfortable for us. Yeah. And honestly, for me, when I'm worshiping, that's the same for me. I mean, sometimes I just want to sit mm-hmm. and listen to the words. And, you know, sometimes I do want to sit alone and cry back <laughs> here because that's where I'm at right now. And that's okay. Um, you know, or sometimes I want to stand with my arms raised or... Um, you know, sometimes I'm literally on my knees, like, yeah, because that's where I'm at that day. And so I think sometimes in the dark, we feel more comfortable being our true self, whatever that mm-hmm. is, or being more vulnerable. Um, so I really like kind of not pitch black, but you know, yeah, some, not being feeling so exposed. I think it's right. a big thing there. You don't want full lights on, yes, feeling like everyone's looking at me, yeah. So, um, but in our context. First of all, we have giant windows, which thank goodness for the sun. I yeah. love the sunshine. Yeah. Um, and we actually have a ton of little kids here. And so we yeah. have families worshiping together, which I really value. The kids yeah. are worshiping with their parents. And it is noisy in the best way, you know, and kids are kind of distracting in the best way. But they also love to sing and dance, which is super fun. <laughs> and so it's not really the right atmosphere right. or darkness. Right. Because then the little kids would all run around <laughs> and the parents couldn't find them. So we have to be able to right. still worship God. So I think then it's like things like making, A, making a place to look aesthetically like clean and well mm-hmm. put together. Um, we Something I did here is we raised the band up onto a platform. Um, you know, and it was very intentional not to say this isn't a stage because this isn't about us. That's why I love leading worship mm-hmm. because I, everyone's focused on God and not us. Um, but also so that everyone can see and engage and the kids can see and engage with yeah. us. Yep. Um, and also just things like on Good Friday, we do turn the lights down low and we add candles and we make mm-hmm. it black. And you can do that with lighting. Our cross turns different colors or our crosses lit different ways during the year for different church seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and on like Sunday nights, we do a youth worship service mm-hmm. um, where we do turn the lights down low. Um and it's just really asking yourself, who is here and how can they connect hmm. with God? And sometimes that means, yeah, like young families are here. And the way they can connect with God is just, A, to get them in the door and yeah. get them together <laughs> and not make it dark so they lose their children in the sanctuary. <laughs> so, but just in terms of, I think always, too, when we're walking into a room and you see that it's like all unkempt and stuff, that can be really oh, yeah. off-putting. So really making sure things yeah. are intentional mm-hmm. in the way we want them to. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know if that no that definitely does <laughs> um and i hear you also saying like you're talking about the various uh communities that you have in worship at a given mm-hmm. moment uh and how that affects those choices too so that's i just want to highlight that um last question mm-hmm. um so for this class they're going to be working on um creating stuff specifically for oak grove Okay. When you are, like, what goes through your brain while you're picking stuff for Oak Grove on a, a worship day when you're leading? Yeah, well, I love coming to Oak Grove and singing. Um, one of my favorite kind of things about the setup of Oak Grove, I have to say, is that I see, it's almost the opposite of, like, I'm on the platform. Like, I'm on the floor and I get to see everybody else's face mm-hmm. and hear everyone else sing, so I just love that. Um, but one thing I was taught um, by some worship leaders I really respect is, that we're always praying that we, first of all, that we're preparing our hearts and ourselves so that we have worshiped a lot before we ever get up in front of people Mm -hmm. and are leading others in worship. Because really, I feel like worship leaders, no matter what you're doing, I mean, honestly, I I tell our slides and projection people at church that they are the worship leaders because it doesn't matter what we're singing or what we're playing if there's no words on the screen for people to sing with. So every person within the team that's doing things is worship leading. Mm -hmm. Um, But we're honestly kind of tour guides, right? Like if you go on a, a trip, I don't know, to even to like, Italy or I don't know where you you know Mm -hmm. Washington DC and you're going to see the monuments or the old churches and stuff the people aren't like look at me yeah like look at me you know I'm the tour guide they're saying like I think this is majestic and you will too and so let me tell you about how great it is and let me really um really highlight its beauty and its wonder and its amazingness and give you as much information about it as I can so we are tour guides 
So when I'm going to Oak Grove, for example, when I'm looking at the students, I'm just asking them to look at Jesus with me, mm. you know? And so that means I've really also been pursuing Jesus by myself a lot. Mm. Um, and, and then um, I think the other thing that I've learned from my worship pastors was that we, to pray every time, every time I'm starting to think about what songs we're gonna sing, that I'm gonna be somewhere and I'm gonna lead them in worship is, give me your heart, God, for these people. Um, like what let me see them give me the eyes to see yeah. where they're at give me the heart to know them um, because then it's it is it's getting into that space of like what are they going through you know last on Wednesday of this last week um, our congregation got some really hard sad news about some people in our congregation that were really sick and are um, going to pass away and that worship service was very emotional, hmm. but because I was able to, I was praying that prayer, I was kind of aware of that beforehand. Mm -hmm. because God made me aware of that, that feeling. And so I'm asking, whenever I come to Oak Grove, my first question is, you know, where is everyone at God? Because mm -hmm. I need to know, because again, we're not going to sing five peppy songs about how excited right. we are right. about everything. If we're sad, like, that's <laughs> probably the wrong right. place to be. And yeah. then it's going back and saying, okay, this is where we're at. And these are the songs I want to sing. And I feel mm -hmm. like are called to sing when I'm in that space, or Holy Spirit, what are you asking? What do you think they need to sing? And then it's just starting, I just play through them. You know, I just mm -hmm. start going. And maybe I, you know, I sing Build My Life and I feel very confident about that one and what's that, and I write that one down. And then I'm starting to just sit on the Lord and I start hearing another song or, or I try something and I'm like, oh no, that's not yeah. the one for this. Yeah. And so I'm just sitting there and I'm crafting it with God, um, which is the crazy thing about worship, right? We're crafting things for God with God. Mm -hmm. so. For real. That's probably the main things I do. Um, and then obviously I try really hard to remember the time limit. I'm really <laughs> not very good at that, so I'm working on that. <laughs> uh, I, do you have anything else that is on your mind when it comes to worship or worship leading or uh, the way that you design services? Anything that we haven't already asked you about? Um, I... I'm just really excited that you're, you and your class are talking about worship leading because I think my life, I always knew I wanted to do worship leadership um, because I love singing and I love God and I love singing mm. about God. Um, but I think there's, to remember, there's lots of ways to lead worship, like I said. Sometimes I love doing the screens because I just feel like I'm yeah. like, this is yeah. so fun, like, to be behind the scenes. And so no matter what you're doing, it's super important and it's good to just reflect on it and learn about it because trial by fire is not is mm -hmm. if only I knew what I knew now, you know, when I started, which was now like 15 years ago. <laughs> I think, and you're always learning, you're always growing. But yeah. God is the ultimate worship leader. So really just keep praying and asking him what he wants to do because he'll let you. He'll tell you. But I think it's cool that you guys are all talking about it. I wish I had talked about it when I was in <laughs> So, yeah. Well, thanks. Cool. Well, thank you, Hope. Thank you for taking time on your Sunday afternoon. Yeah. <laughs>